This tutorial is going to show you how to add structural grid lines which can be used to then add structural columns. I'm going to start a new project since the last project I used for tutorials was a residential project that did not have any columns. So I'm going to very quickly pick a generic wall and draw a quick building to use for this tutorial. Now that I have my building, I'm going to go to the Architecture tab and then all the way over to the right hand side and click on Grid. Now I'm going to start placing grid lines and because I am planning on using these exterior walls as load bearing walls, I'm going to put a grid line in those as well because they are also a structural element. I'm going to go ahead and place grid lines in just a random spacing because I'm not sure what my spacing is going to be yet based on my structural element that I'm going to be selecting using Studio Companion and I need to put a grid in both vertically and horizontally which allows us to talk about columns in both the vertical and horizontal direction. When we're putting these grid lines in we need to remember that one direction it doesn't matter if it's vertical or horizontal needs to be numbers and the other direction needs to be letters. Revit does not do that as we add these grid lines in, so we have to go back and edit them accordingly. To do that, we click on the grid line, and over in the properties, we can change those from numbers to letters. And just like we are in numerical order for the grid lines in one direction, we need to be in alphabetical order for the grid lines in the opposite direction. And of course, they need to be all caps, as we see, with other notes and text because of the industry standard. Now I want to go back through and since Revit put the numbers on these grid bubbles based on how I put them in the drawing, I want to make sure that even the numbers are correct. Oh, and I didn't fix that last one properly. Remember Revit does not let us repeat numbers, so that's why we get an error message sometimes if we forget that that number is still out there and we haven't replaced it yet. Once we get all of these numbers updated, we will then use the dimension tool in order to evenly space all of these grid bubbles in both directions. Revit also sometimes doesn't like it if you move faster than it does and it yells at you as it's doing right now. Okay, oh, the last number was already used so it was giving me an error. And last one. I want to make sure to save. And then I'm going to go up to the shortcut toolbar, pick a line dimension, and now I'm going to dimension every grid line in succession. I'm not going to do them individually because when I do that and I pull the grids or the dimension string for the grid lines up, you notice an EQ. So I can get out of that command and then click on the line and click on the EQ and you notice it evenly spaced all of those grid lines that were dimensioned. I want to do the same thing in the opposite direction and it's a nice way to evenly space things and again if I don't get it all done I need to start over and make sure I select all of the grid lines or it won't make them equally spaced. I can also go back and delete that if I don't need it and then I get this error message saying that they are not constrained anymore. When they're constrained they actually move together so if I moved one line it would move all of them so that they were the same spacing but I don't need that right now so I'm going to delete those to get them out of the way. I'm going to save again and now I'm going to go add my column. I go to the structure tab now and click on the column tab and you notice that W sections are automatically loaded in with Revit but if I'm using something else I need to go to load family and then I need to go 
to the structural columns folder within my library and then I can select from the different options that are here and if I pick something like steel it might ask me a specific size and probably will sometimes it will let you adjust the size in the actual properties bar once you inserted it but since we already have a W section here I'm going to use that W section and I'm going to utilize all the grid lines that I just created so the modify tab came open when I selected that column and now I can use at grids and select all of the grid lines either using the fence which is what that line is called from left to right and it selects everything that I touch but since I don't want the outer grid lines because those are from my load bearing walls I can actually hit escape and try it again using at grids and going from right to left and when you use the fence from right to left it gets everything that you touch so now I've got just those interior grid lines and I can hit finish you notice that I got an error message that says they're not on the floor plan that's because for some reason Revit likes to put columns in below the level that you associate it with so if I go to the 3d view I can see that those columns are here but if I go to an elevation I can see that they're actually below my first level. So this is a good way to show you how to add a foundation level. So I actually want to go back to the level marker on the architecture tab or on the structure tab and I want to add a level that's about three feet below my ground level or my first level and that's going to vary based on where your foundation is and your type of foundation. But for now, three feet will work. And what I can do is I can change the name of that to foundation. What this does is if we see the plus next to the structural plans in our project browser, is create a structural plan where all of our foundation is going to be. And that will include footings as we add those. So now I've selected all of my um, columns. And I can see where the issue is. It says the base level is level one and the top level is level one. So I want to change my top level to be level two. And I want to remove that base offset by just putting in zero. When I hit apply, all of those columns went away. And now they're on my level one. And in the 3D, they're still there, but they're just not below the slab like they were before. The next tutorial I'm going to do will show you how to add footings to walls and columns.